today, only four companies in the world are worth more than $2 trillion. Apple, Microsoft, oil company Saudi Aramco, and as of 2024, Nvidia. It took the GPU giant only nine months to go from $1 trillion to a bit over two. And while OpenAI is valued at about $80 billion, we've already noticed that advanced artificial intelligence is changing our usual life. Now, whoever owns this technology and controls its development is capable of ruling the world. While most people are worried about super smart artificial intelligence, the head of OpenAI, Sam Altman, is creating a powerful alliance for AI development. How did humanity get to this point? I'm Nick, and we're about to get to the bottom of this. Folks, today we're excited to share a way to safeguard your online privacy with you. You probably know that data brokers sell your information to scammers, spammers, and anyone else who wants to target you. They hawk everything from your full name and email to your home address, health records, and even details about your relatives. That's why our team recommends using Aura, the sponsor of today's video. Aura is a must-have essential app for privacy protection. It shows you which data brokers are trading your information and automatically handles opt-out requests. It's not just about reducing spam, it's about personal protection from hackers who could potentially exploit this information to access social media profiles, bank accounts, or other sensitive data. Have you heard the shocking numbers from AT&T? Over 73 million customers' records, both existing and former customers, were released on the dark web. They recommend those affected use strong passwords, monitor account activity, and consider credit freezes or fraud alerts from credit agencies. Aura takes care of all of that. And the best part, you don't have to download several different apps just because a company couldn't keep your data secure. Don't worry about AT&T or any other company data breaches. Aura is always on, always doing the hard work, and always keeping you safe. We value our privacy and we value yours. You can start your two-week free trial by following the link on the screen. Also, link below in the description. Take care of yourself and your privacy. At the height of the Industrial Revolution in the 19th century, the energy needs were growing rapidly in Europe and America, and oil was the solution to this problem. Companies would dig oil wells left and right, and the U.S. saw a real oil fever. At the beginning of the 20th century, the level of oil consumption increased, and during the Second World War, the demand for oil went through the roof. Countries with oil all of a sudden started playing a significant role in world economy and geopolitics. But while the older generation competed over who had the most oil, another leap of tech development was taking place. Now history was made outside of the oil fields. Most of the corporations that are now famous all over the world were created in a garage or even a college campus. It became something of a tradition. In 1939, HP was born. Steve Jobs and Steve Wozniak used the garage to assemble their first Apple computer and sell it for 500 bucks plus a third of a markup equating to $666. Mark Zuckerberg is known to have come up with the idea for Facebook in his dorm room at Kirkland House in Harvard. Suddenly, young dreamers without capital began to change our world and with it, our economy. Large IT companies contribute significantly to job creation, tax revenues, and overall economic growth, and their technology products span many countries, making them key players in the global economy. Last 32 years have been the most eventful in terms of tech innovation. Google, 1997, Facebook, 2004, iPhone, 2007, Bitcoin, 2009, the self-driving car, 2012. People have started spending more time on cell phones, iPads, and laptops. It was there on the internet that they began to search for information, entertainment, and everything they needed for life, from milk to a country house. As of 2020, Google had over 4.9 billion users worldwide. That's over 60% of the world's population. More than half of all Google users access their search engine only through mobile devices. And Amazon has over 200 million users worldwide. The world has come to be ruled by those who help users live online. And while oil is still in demand, the future is definitely not in oil.
We live in an era of change. What is currently in demand is not just a search engine, but a search engine with AI. Not web-enabled gadgets, but devices with AI chips. Not only is this convenient, but extremely profitable for some. After all, one of the very first functions of neural networks is to process big data. The personal data that online platforms collect about their customers on a daily basis is staggering. AI technologies analyze this data, which in turn allows businesses to know exactly what consumers want and need most, and then fulfill these desires. It all started in 2012 when Jeffrey Hinton, also known as the godfather of artificial intelligence, along with his top students, developed a system that can analyze a thousand images and train itself to recognize similar objects in reality. We're talking about the AlexNet program, which in the beginning was able to identify every fourth image correctly. Then it reached an accuracy of 75%, and after seven years, the program stood at 95% recognition rate. Years later, Hinton's student, Ilya Sutskever, as part of Google's DeepMind, will develop AlphaGo to do one thing and one thing only, play Go, the oldest and one of the most complex board games in the world. In March of 2016, the program defeated a human. The neural network didn't just memorize possible combinations, but studied all the books on game strategy, all the moves of professionals in online matches, and even played with itself, developing new strategies. In 2014, Sam Altman enters the scene. Together with Elon Musk, they create OpenAI. Its mission was to make artificial intelligence benefit mankind. The startup, with only a few hundred employees, started the boom of generative artificial intelligence with ChatGPT. In 2022, the company introduced a large language model capable of communicating with users almost like a human and generating high-quality texts. 1 million interactions in the first five days and 100 million interactions in the first couple of months. The technology is being used to find quick answers, write code, write a poem, and spit out university diplomas. Chatbots and the like are still in their early stages of development, but everything in the AI world is already centered around just four companies. You know them. Google, OpenAI, Microsoft, and Anthropic. Microsoft, by the way, partnered with OpenAI. Smart move. Shortly after the company released ChatGPT, Microsoft implemented OpenAI-based chatbots with its Bing search engine. To keep up, Google announced that more artificial intelligence features would be added to Search, Maps, Docs, and so on, and introduced Bard, its own competing chatbot. It seems that Microsoft and Google, trying to overtake each other, are integrating generative artificial intelligence into almost every segment of their business. And not too long ago, Apple joined the race. The company is looking to implement technologies that are turning the tech industry upside down. It's now in talks with Google to implement the search giant's generative artificial intelligence, rebranded as Gemini, for its next iPhone. Clearly, AI has taken the world by storm. OpenAI CEO Sam Altman is building nothing less than a worldwide coalition to develop AI infrastructure. He's already met with investors and officials in the United Arab Emirates to discuss how the private sector can help countries support expansive, expensive, large-scale AI infrastructure. Want to know more? Check out our latest video on the topic in the description below. Now, Altman has become one of the most influential people in the industry. The December coup at the company, when Sam was briefly ousted as co-founder and CEO, solidified his position. Who would have thunk it? He's an ambitious manager who believed in the idea of smart AI and strived to make it a reality. In an interview, he said that for this to succeed, you need an idea that turns into a monopoly. But you can't get a monopoly in a big market, so it's worth going into a small one where there's a prospect of rapid expansion. Today, rapid expansion is integral to the way venture capital funded tech works. The AI industry can be split into several types of companies. The first category is hardware manufacturers. They develop their own chips and processors. This market is dominated by NVIDIA, which controls over 80% of the global market for chips best suited running AI applications. The next category is companies that build artificial intelligence models, and there's a lot of money being invested here. 
Last January, Microsoft invested $10 billion in OpenAI, bringing its total investment in the San Francisco startup to $13 billion. The last category of companies involved in AI are those that work with and provide data to experts trying to train new models. The best known company of this type is Scale AI. Quote from Tim O'Reilly. One of the big problems with Silicon Valley is that it no longer supports free market competition. It used to be that any, even questionable idea was supported. In 2010, ultra-low lending rates made capital cheap and companies started buying up market share. Now we're seeing highly capitalized companies driving everyone else out of business, end quote. Small companies that are exploring artificial intelligence are leaving the market because there are AI giants with a few more dollars to spend than the rest. And it's impossible to compete with them because it takes a lot of expensive chips to develop powerful artificial intelligence. Talk about free market, huh? Since 2020, OpenAI has been developing its generative artificial intelligence technology on a huge supercomputer built by Microsoft, one of its biggest backers, which uses 10,000 NVIDIA graphics processing units. A single GPU costs about 800 bucks. Now, last year, Altman himself complained about the lack of advanced processors on which the company's software runs and the incredible costs associated with operating the hardware needed to support his efforts and products. So if artificial intelligence is the gold rush, it's the hardware companies that are selling the shovels. Over the past few years, OpenAI has become the undisputed leader in artificial intelligence, pushing even Google aside. Last year, the search giant promised to unveil a new artificial intelligence model called Gemini. The presentation ended up taking place only in February this year. Then Bard was renamed into Gemini. The rebranding was explained by the fact that the company is building an ecosystem around the Gemini neural network and a separate name for the service is necessary. The main functions and interface of the chatbot have not changed since BARD, however. AWS, or Amazon Web Services, is a set of cloud services from, you guessed it, Amazon. On a single platform, users can order computing resources, storage infrastructure, and services with ready-to-use tools. At the end of 2020, AWS generated $13 billion in operating revenue. For Amazon, its cloud business led the first cloud computing boom. Now, OpenAI and its growing relationships with thousands of AI developers are challenging AWS's cloud dominance. Both Google and Amazon recently invested billions of dollars in Anthropic, an artificial intelligence startup founded by former OpenAI employees. Life is so multi-layered, is it not? Brother and sister Dario and Daniela Amadou left OpenAI in protest over its decision to partner with Microsoft. They claim to take a safer and more responsible approach to AI optimization than other companies building advanced systems. Anthropic differs from OpenAI in that it advocates for open access to it. It was this idea that once united Dario and Daniela with other developers at OpenAI before Sam took a sharp turn. Anthropic developed Constitutional AI, a radical new method of harmonizing AI systems. The company has implemented this approach in its latest chatbot, Claude, a close competitor to GPT-4, OpenAI's most powerful model. Also unhappy with OpenAI's new policy is Elon Musk. He has filed a lawsuit against the company, which in his opinion has deviated from the non-commercial nature of its activities. And his accusations have some strong arguments behind them. Three years after its founding, OpenAI has moved to mixed profits. Quote, We have to go out and do. We had tried and failed enough to raise money as a nonprofit organization, so we needed some of the benefits of capitalism. End quote. Altman recounted that in an interview. The company then partnered with Microsoft and signed contracts with the military. In one interview, former co-founder Elon Musk said, Open is in the name, but now it should be closed AI. And all because OpenAI originated as a nonprofit company that dealt with first and foremost security. What do you think? Has the company betrayed its ideals in an attempt to make money? And should it be renamed to Closed AI? Leave your comments below and let us know.
AI is taking away jobs from people. Media moguls are replacing employees with artificial intelligence. NVIDIA is teaming up with Hippocratic AI to introduce affordable AI nurses that could transform healthcare. They're designed to provide medical advice to patients during video calls, all for just nine bucks an hour. Would you like to see such a service launched in your country? Would you be willing to pay for an AI nurse? Depends on what she's wearing, right? Today, NVIDIA's four main markets are gaming, 3D design, data centers, and automotive industries, as the company supplies chips for facilitating driving technologies. A few years ago, its gaming market still generated the largest share of revenue, or about $5.5 billion, compared to the data center segment, which earned about $3 billion. Then, the pandemic hit. People started spending a lot more time at home, and demand for computer components, including graphics processors, skyrocketed, with the company's gaming revenue jumping as much as 41% in fiscal year of 2021. But there are already signs of the coming wave of artificial intelligence. Revenues from NVIDIA's data centers grew by an even more impressive 124%. In 2023, its revenue was 400% higher than a year earlier. It's a clear indication of how quickly the AI race is gaining momentum that data centers have overtaken gaming, even during the gaming boom. Whether NVIDIA retains its status as a $2 trillion company or rises to even greater heights depends largely on whether it can maintain consumer and investor attention on AI. Silicon Valley is awash with newly founded AI companies, but what percentage of them will survive and how long will sponsors continue to invest in them? Some financial analysts and industry experts are a little weary about NVIDIA's exorbitant valuations, suspecting that enthusiasm for AI will slow down and perhaps this entire AI thing is a bubble that'll eventually burst. ChatGPT traffic has plummeted since last May and investors are a bit iffy about things like that. To date, AI companies have taken the lead in the market and we have witnessed artificial intelligence fever. Current developments are probably just the beginning of a massive race that is gaining momentum. A massive arrival of AI is expected by many. Exactly how this tech will change our lives is difficult to say, but one thing's for sure, it will be a dramatic one. And just like with oil or IT, the new development will no longer cause excitement and surprise, but will cement itself in our lives. Yay? or nay? Let us know in the comments. Also, let us know in the comments what you think about our expose, share your thoughts on where this entire thing is going, and of course, subscribe to the channel, like our videos, and stay tuned for more from the world of high tech.